Hey yo, what's going on everybody? This is Caleb and in this video we're going to be talking about string methods. Now first I wanted to say a special thank you to our sponsor, Embarcadero C++ Builder Community Edition. So yes, there's a community edition that you can go use for free. What is C++ Builder exactly? Well it's an IDE that gives you everything you need to start building C++ applications. So it's a little bit more complete than just doing something like Visual Studio Code because there's all kinds of different things like a really beefed out debugger, user interface developer, lots of tools for database integration and API integration, and best of all there is the opportunity to deploy to four platforms, Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. So yeah, it's like four times the result from one C++ code base. So it's pretty awesome, go check it out, link in the description. Now the first thing I wanted to talk about in this video is a method we already talked about which is string length. So we can go in here and put dot length with the parentheses. This is an example of a method. It's basically just a function attached to an object. The object in this case is greeting. Now this is going to give us the number of characters in the string, which in this case is zero because we didn't assign anything. <laughs> there we go, now we have five. So you might see length inside of C++, but another one is size. And these do exactly the same thing. I think it's just a naming thing so that if you're used to using size, you can use it here. But if you prefer length, such as other languages might use, then you can use that instead. So those are your first two methods, length and size. They don't do anything too crazy, but they're a lot of fun because they give you back the length of your string. Now the classification of methods we're going to be talking about in this video are known as modifiers. They modify the string that we're working with. The first one we're going to talk about is append. And we're actually going to do it up here so we can output it here. So let's just output greeting and just go through some examples. So we can do greeting plus equals and then put another value here. And this is going to append to the original string, meaning it changes this variable here. So we don't have to assign this back to greeting or use it in another variable. We can just do it like so. And you can see when it outputs, it keeps there inside of that greeting variable. So that actually modifies the string variable. Now there is another way to do that, and it's with dot append, like so. And what we can do is just put a value in here like so. When we compile and run, it works exactly the same way. So which you prefer is a totally up to you. I like to use the plus equals. I think it's a little bit more universal. So that's what I would recommend. The next one is insert. So what we do is we give it a position. So let's say we want to put this at index three and we're going to input the value. Uh, let's put a bunch of spaces so we can easily see it. So index three, zero, one, two, three. So everything at index three and on is going to be pushed over. So the string should be inserted between the two L's. So basically what this is saying is that at index three, we want this string to be there. We can put a semicolon there. Now let's compile and run. And you can see the first letters are here. There's a giant space which we inserted and then there's low. The next one is erase. So if we wanted to erase that, what we would do is say greeting dot erase give it a position, so let's say three. Then the next argument is actually the total number of characters to remove. So I can't really see that too well, so let's just make it easy and get rid of some of them. So there's one space here. <laughs> so if we wanted to remove one character, we would put a one in there. Now when we compile and run, it should just say hello, and it does. These might be useful if you're going through some data and you wanna modify it in some way. For example, if you want to insert some kind of delimiter in a string to separate things, or if you want to get rid of a delimiter, you can do that with these two functions. Now, if you want to delete the entire ending, you can get rid of that length there, and what's going to happen is everything after that position is going to be removed. So we're just going to have H-E-L. And there you go. Now, let's say you wanted to remove the last character. What you could do is actually use the string length in here. So we could say greeting dot length and then do minus one. So that's going to get us the last index. The reason we have a minus one is because length does not start from zero, whereas index is due. So the string length of five means the highest index is four. Before we run this, I wanna get rid of this insert here. So let's just work with this hello. Let's say we wanna get rid of that O. <laughs> we compile and run this, and we get a little bit of a, you know, 
bad word here, sorry about that. But that is how you remove the last character. This must be pretty common or something because there's actually a dedicated function for removing the last character. So if you wanted to do that, you just say pop underscore back with nothing as an argument. When we run this, it works just the same way. So that's a little bit prettier. The other one's a little bit more customizable because you can start at a different position, but pop back's pretty simple if you just need to remove that one character at the end. Now this is a little vulgar, so let's change this up a little bit. <laughs> we could use the replace function to change a string. So we could say greeting.replace. The first argument is the starting index. The second argument is the length. So we could change the first four characters, and then the next argument is what we want to replace it with. So we could go in here and say heaven. So what this is going to do is it's going to delete the first four characters and replace it with heaven. Obviously this is kind of silly because we could just completely erase the string, but this allows us to be specific if we have a word inside of another string. So I'll show you what I mean in just a couple of seconds. Let's run this, make sure I got it right. Yeah, definitely make sure you spell it right. It's kind of important. Now when we run, we get heaven. Now I'm not usually one to use language in my videos, but I want to illustrate something. If we had a string that was being used, let's say we were making some kind of social platform and we wanted to implement some kind of censorship, well, we can use these functions to do such a thing. So first off, when we're working with these strings, we're not going to know the position of any kind of language that we want to censor. In the next video, we're gonna be talking about how to search a string for particular words. So if you wanted to build an application to basically censor strings, you could do that very easily using a combination of these functions. So in this situation, let's just assume we already have that index, we found it, we can replace it. So the H is actually at index nine, and we can replace it like so. And there we go. <laughs> that sounds so weird. But you could do something else, for example, you could replace it with asterisks. So this is good, practical, useful information for when you want to create an application. This stuff might actually come up, especially if you're building a game where there might be younger people involved. Or you might have settings to turn foul language on or off. So now we understand how to replace parts of strings. In the next video, I'm going to be talking about how to find a particular string inside of another string. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. These are going to go into the functions that don't modify the string directly, but instead return some value or a modification. A Little bit different than the ones we've been talking in this video, which are modifiers, they change the original variable value. So check out the next video if you've enjoyed this content, please subscribe. Once again, sorry for my language, but this is practical, useful information. So thanks guys, I'll see you in the next video.